All right, it's your favorite animal scientist again. Uh, today we'll be talking about housing systems. I, I was always postponing this part of the video. In most of my earlier presentations, uh, we talked about the housing systems uh, that we're going to deal on that. Now, this part is going to be broken into several or a couple of videos because we want to go into details on how to construct a snail house. And there are different types of construction, dif different types of housings. So I would like you guys to be patient with us so that we can actually educate you on how to go about these constructions. We'll show you the designs and the pictures of them, what they look like, how you go about designing them. We will try our best to educate you on this. Of course, we have a lot of practical videos. Uh, if you have not seen most of our videos uh, while you are on this training, please do well to subscribe to our channel on YouTube and type Kesta Amos and subscribe to the channel. You will see a lot of videos, practical videos. These are the first series of theoretical videos we are making. Otherwise, majority or 100% of our videos have been from the farm. And we have over 180 plus videos, both on snails, on poultry, on grass cutter, on rabbits, on fish farming, and all of those. So that is why uh, we are making these uh, um, statements, which are ordinarily we wouldn't make uh, in a training session like this. But please try and subscribe so you can see more of our practical videos. All right, so today we're going to be talking about housing systems, the different types of houses you have for snails, and how you go about these housing systems. But before we look at those housing systems, there are several different types of housing systems, and uh, we have to look at some factors that determine the construction of these housing systems. And we are still going to come back to the goal of the snail farming enterprise again, because... Uh, it has to do with what type of accommodation you want to build for your snails. That will be determined by how much you have for the snail farming business. Do you want to do a small scale snail farm? Then you don't need to build a greenhouse. You don't need to build a massive free range system. You just need maybe some wooden boxes around your premises where you can practice or start small. You want to do a medium scale farm then you need a small concrete pen system. You want to do a large, massive farm system, a setup that comprises the intensive and the semi-intensive system. All of these are being determined by the scale of the enterprise, the snail farming enterprise. So we cannot run away from this particular factor. We talked about it in our last video. If you have not seen that video, please go and check it out. And uh, if you have forgotten, we talked about it, you have the video with you, please do well to check on it again. So the uh, type of housing system you choose to build is determined by how much you have and what is your goal? What is the purpose of the snail farm? Is it for personal consumption or is it for commercial purpose or is it for practice? Yes, there's that category of people. Talking about the snail stage of development has to do with the age of the snails. How old are the snails? Like from our previous uh, videos, if you've been attentive, you understand that we have the pen system and the greenhouse system, and they work hand in hand. Now, the pen system is where we do the breeding, control the breeding, and carry out proper hatching. When they have hatched, the baby snails will move them into the greenhouse where they, you have a vegetation, a natural vegetation. The fruits and vegetables that the uh, snails will feed on are already cultivated inside the greenhouse. So the baby snails are introduced into the greenhouse where they will grow very fast, unlike in the concrete pens. The growth rate is slower in the concrete pen, but faster in the greenhouse. So that is why the snails stage of development or the age of the snail also determine the type of housing system to build. So if you're looking at fattening your snails, 
for marketing not minding too much about egg production then the best system to go with is the greenhouse system so you just bring in the snails and grow them to table size and in the process of growing them to table size of course they will they will begin to lay because we said from our previous videos uh, at the point of nine months the snail begin to lay egg but still they are not physiologically matured so they are still growing so if grow out operation is the goal then all you need is a greenhouse so that is why we said the factors the snails stage of development also come to play in deciding the system of housing then the reproductive status or the snail sorry snails physiological status the snails physiological status an animal's physiological status simply means the state of the animal is it a pregnant animal is it is the animal meant for breeding is the animal meant for fattening that's the physiological status of the animal now if we are talking about breeding snails like i just mentioned they are best read on the concrete pen system while the hatchlings the baby snails are best read on a free range system or greenhouse system so for commercial production you will need both systems and in hand you will need the free range the greenhouse and the intensive system so you have the breeding stock on the intensive system where you have a controlled breeding process and incubation and hashing process then the baby snails due to their massive numbers you move them into the greenhouse for growing out because if you want to have a commercial farm and you have only the concrete pen or the intensive system it is very expensive and it does not accommodate a lot of snails each of those concrete pens we have 50 breeding snails and if the snails are much younger like the hatchling stage we have maximum 200 snails in one pen now if you have a space of land of a plot 50 by 100 even if you stock the snails 200 snails per pen you will have a maximum of 200 pens in 50 by 100 200 times 200 that should be somewhere around uh, 40,000 snails if i am not mistaken but that is highly overstocked because 200 is the capacity for baby snails as the snails continue to grow in size and age you continue to reduce the numbers per pen until they come to 50 to 100 snails per pen at table size and if you want to do 100 snails for 200 pens that is 20,000 snails in a whole plot of land 50 by 100 but for the greenhouse that is measuring 26 feet by 100 feet that is 8 meters by 30 meters it can accommodate between 40,000 to 60,000 snails in a space of land that is just shy of a half plot why because of the freedom of movement so you will understand that if you want to go into commercial scale you must have a greenhouse and a, uh, a concrete pen system in place the concrete pen system helps you to breed the animals in a more controlled manner then when they hatch you move the hatchlings to the greenhouse where they become where they grow faster but if the concrete pen system is all you have you will have two major problems number one the capital outlay in extension of a concrete pen is capital intensive building even a small intensive pen system might, will even uh, require the amount of money you spend in building one intensive pen system you can build two greenhouses with it and now if you look at it the greenhouse system will accommodate more snails than the same land space of the intensive system so the best thing to do for commercial production is have the intensive system that will carry the uh, amount of breeding stock you want to have on your farm then the remaining space of your land should be for greenhouses so when you breed from here you introduce into the greenhouses 
So once you continue building it more greenhouses, not more concrete pens. For instance, we built a project in Kano State. We have it on our YouTube channel. We built 650 pens and introduced 30,000 breeder snails. Then we built 10 greenhouses for a start. So as this 30,000 breeders breed on the concrete pens and they lay eggs, that farm is producing not less than 20,000 eggs every week. So as they produce, we incubate and they hatch, we continue to move to the 10 greenhouses. By the time we fill about 5 greenhouses, they begin to build another 10 greenhouses. So you see that the expansion is only on the greenhouses and not on the concrete pens. Why? Because the amount of money that was spent to build 600 concrete pens that accommodated only 30,000 breeding snails is more than the money we spent in building 10 greenhouses that is capable of containing 400,000 snails. So you see the advantage of the greenhouse and the advantage of the concrete pen in controlling breeding. So that is for full-scale commercial farm. Now, for a small-scale farm, you need only pens. Like we said, the objectives of the small-scale farmer is for practice, for personal consumption, and for demonstration to build a bigger or larger project. So as a result of that, all you need is Either you build wooden boxes, the arch box, concrete pens, trench pens, baskets, tier of tires, low fence pen, and so on. Small setups so that you can practice with it. For that, you don't need a greenhouse. So that is why the goal of the production also determines the housing system. And also, the snail's physiological status determines the housing system. And also, the stage of development of the snails determine the housing system. So, you must understand these details before embarking on a snail farm. So, you are able to define the type of farming enterprise you want to embark on. Is it small scale? Is it medium scale? Is it large scale? Medium scale, you can have maybe 50 pens or 100 pens and have uh, your breeding snails and build one greenhouse. So you do breeding on 100 pens, then they hatch, you move to the one greenhouse. That is a medium scale. But for a small scale, you don't need the greenhouse at all. You can have four pens, five pens, six pens as you want to practice. And like I said on the inter uh, introduction video, if you've not seen it, please check it out on our YouTube as well. Uh, as we said there, you cannot have a small scale farm and make returns on a snail farm business. Because the small scale farm would develop to a medium scale, from a medium scale to a large scale. Why? Because the snails do not have an equilibrium point. They will continue laying from stage to stage. The laying will continue increasing from step to step. That is how the process works. So if you just have four pens, trust me, before a month, they will lay hatch and outgrow your four pens. So you're not even talking about marketing baby snails before you start talking about extending your farm. So the small scale system is just for household use, for practice, or for demonstration, whatever. But if you want to go into serious snail farming business, you should be looking at medium-sized snail farm to commercial snail farm. So now we'll look at some of the materials that are required for the snail farm construction. The materials must be affordable. They must be affordable. They should be materials that you can easily locate around your environment. They should not be materials that will cause danger to the snails. The materials must not have sharp edges. After constructing the building, you must not have sharp edges in the snail farm or the pen. 
so that the snails are not pierced or injured. So the materials you must use must also be decay uh, um, resistant to termite infestation. If you're using wood, you must use very hard woods and also paint your woods with uh, uh, termite uh, chemicals that help to take care of uh, termites. You must also take note of that so that when you introduce the snails, the woods you use to construct the snail farm will not be damaged by termites. Neither will they be rusting. If you're using iron, like the greenhouses, we use galvanized iron. We don't use steel pipes. Steel pipes can rust very fast. So you use galvanized pipes that can stay for a very long time without rusting. So it should be rust free. They are not something that you, when water comes in contact of it, they become rusting. No. So you must use good materials adequate and solid building materials but most of all these materials must be affordable and they must be within your locality the housing system must also protect the snails from parasites and diseases insects like predators parasites and diseases the housing system must be able to prevent the snails from these things so we use decay proof materials on our building infrastructures it must also facilitate the security of the snow pen for instance many of our snow pen constructions we have it under lock and key there should be a lock on the pens so that it is only the farm attendants or the manager that has access to the keys to open the snail house. So these are some of the measures that you must take into recognition or into consideration before embarking on the snail farm. Now, if we are using overhead shade, some persons have said do not use uh iron roofing sheets do not use galvanized sheets and all of that all of those things do not count the snail house is meant for snails and not for human beings to occupy if you go into the snail house and you're feeling the heat of the roof it doesn't mean the snails are feeling it beneath now when you look at the snail pens we have soil in the pen we have dried plantain leaves in the pen. That is because the snails are meant to hide under the dry plantain leaves. Now the overhead shade you have must at least be 7 to 8 feet above this, the ground level. And the snails are on the ground level. So using iron roofing sheets has nothing to do with your snail farm. It has no adverse effect with your snail farm. We have used it year after year and it is very effective if you want to use patches made from bamboos you want to use wooden slates they are all fine but you must ensure that whatever you're using will not introduce insects parasites to it and it must be termite resistant because you don't want to construct a building today and think about how you begin you, you, you construct another one tomorrow so the materials used must be up to date but they must be affordable of low uh, um, financial inputs low cost materials but durable materials those are the kind of materials that are required for building your snow farm then after building the snow farm you must secure the snail farm from parasites and predators. Now, the major predator to snails is man. Predators are things that kill other animals. The animal that is being killed is called the prey. 
why the killer animal is the predator. Man is the most deadliest predator to snails. Why? Because man can pack all your snails and do away with it, steal your snails, boggle your farm. Every animal has its organ of defense and offense. It would be stupid of me to put my hands inside the mouth of a pig because the organ of offense of the pig is the tusk, that canine sharp teeth. It can break your bones with it. But I can easily put my hands in the hand of a cattle because the cattle do not have a hopper case of teeth. It's just a dental pad there. So the organ of offense of the cattle is not the teeth but the horn and the hind legs. They can kick you with it to death and also with the horn. So those are the organs of offense of the cattle, not the teeth. And that of the pig is the tooth, the canine tooth. That's what it can do a whole lot of damage with. But for the snail, its organ of defense to danger is crawling back into its shell. Once the snail senses danger, it will retrieve into the shell. So if man is the danger that he senses, it's more like telling the man, please hurry up, come and pick me up. Because they will pack all your snails, especially in an intensive system where they are in the pens. They will pack them all overnight. So the major predator to snails are, is man, rather. Then the second most deadly predator to snail is soldier ants. The red soldier ants. It can devastate your farm within a few hours. I have seen it done danger to farms because these farms are not protected. So after building your farm, the first thing you must take into account is to barricade your farm from predators and parasites. So this is what I want to dwell on today before we go properly into the construction of the different patterns of the buildings. Now you must secure your snail farm from predators and parasites. Now predators that crawl from the ground. For the intensive system, we German floor the ground or cast the ground like a living house. But the casting of the ground, you must not shine it. You must not use a tile on it. Because we just do a normal German floor or casted floor. Then we introduce soil, X, loamy soil or humor soil into the pens where we have our snails inside the pens. But if you go and tile the ground or shine the ground, if you sprinkle water, the water will not drain into the ground. But if you only do a normal casting or a normal German flow and you spray, you put the earth, the soil inside the pen, when you sprinkle water on the soil, the ground, the German floor or the casted floor will gradually absorb the soil, the, the water. Why? Because it has some pores that can sink the water in. But when you shine it, make it very smooth or tile it, the water will percolate. It will remain there. And before you know, your pen becomes flooded. So to avoid flooding, do not cast the ground. You can see it on the screen, the pens. These pens are not casted. The floor of these pens are not, sorry, are not shined or plastered. They are just a normal German floor. So after constructing or building the pens, we introduce the loamy soil and introduce the snails. So when we sprinkle water on it, the water will drain easily through the pores of the casted floor. Now the main reason why we cast the floor is to prevent ants from burrowing out of the ground to attack the snails. Because if you don't cast the floor or jam and floor it, once you put your snails there, ants will easily burrow out from the ground and infest your snails. And the loss will be devastating. That is why we cast the floor. 
Now, after casting the floor and putting in your soil, there is also a chance that crawling insects and ants can also still come from outside, climb into the scenery and get into the pens. Now, to prevent this crawling insects, we build a water trench. You can see the water trench on the snail farm under construction. Round it. This water trench goes round the entire pen and is well plastered with water seal cement. Water seal mixed with cement. Plastered both sides and the floor. So water will be inside this trench 247. Now it is not ordinary water we put there. When you put the water, we put Isal, a disinfectant, in strategic locations in the trench. So it will spread and mix with the water. So any crawling insect that wants to get into the snail farm must first pass through this trench that is round the snail farm. And since they cannot come from under the casted floor and trying to come from outside, they have to deal with this disinfectant in the water which will kill them instantly. So you have been able to secure your pens from crawling insects, predators, insects, and uh, other things. Now, what about the ones that fly? Mostly the parasites, like flies, that will fly from the top and perch on the pens. That is why we use a plastic net the type of net we use in the windows of our houses to prevent mosquitoes from having access to our rooms. We use that net to screen the top of the wooden frame first before we use the Boko Haram wire. Pardon me using that word Boko Haram. That is what many people understand the net to be, especially in the West. I, it's quite funny. I was in Lagos to build a farm and uh, I asked them to get a chicken net because we call it chicken net. And the, 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 the carpenter man was like, he doesn't understand. Am I talking about Boko Haram net? I said, what do you mean by Boko Haram net? And of course, that's when Boko Haram was on the rampage. <laughs> I was scared. I said, what do you mean by that? So um, after so much going back and forth, I said, no, chicken net. I don't know what Boko Haram net is. After going back and forth, they now brought a sample of the net, and it was the chicken net. I said, this is the same net I'm talking about. And the man was like, we call it Boko Haram net here. I said, why do you call it that? He said, because the net is stubborn. <laughs> that was a very funny one. I said, anyway, that is fine. As long as we know what we are both talking about now, that's okay. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is the chicken net or the Boko Haram net, as you would know it in your location, especially in Western Nigeria, is now used for the top. So the net the plastic net we use in our house windows is used first on the frame, then the chicken net is used on the top. Why do we have to use the two nets? The top of the pens are exposed to flies, insects that fly that could go in there and destroy your snails. So the plastic or the mosquito net helps to prevent those flies from having access. But then reptiles can also jump across that water trench and get to the top of the pen and pull that plastic net apart with their claws and expose it. If they can't get in, they will expose it for flies to go in. So that is why we use the uh, Boko Haram net or the uh, chicken net, wire mesh, on top. So reptiles like lizards, iguana, or monitor lizards, cannot damage the rugged chicken net. So while they cannot damage the rugged chicken net, but the chicken net has bigger holes. Flies that will be able to penetrate the chicken net will not be able to penetrate the mosquito net. So that is why we use both nets to screen it properly so that we are able to keep away predators and parasites that fly from the top that will not necessarily crawl and get to the water trench. So this way you are able to take care of the issues of predators and parasites, which is very, very important. So you must have this at the back of your mind or at the front of your mind, as I like to say it, when you're building your own farm. Then if you're using small older systems, like the wooden boxes, as you can see on the screen, 
you put the foot of the wooden boxes in a container that has engine, engine oil on it, condemned engine oil, as you can see on the screen. The box, the foot of the boxes will be standing in these containers that has condemned engine oil. So for any ant or insect crawling on the ground to gain access to the foot of the box, must first land in this condemned engine oil. And of course, we all know the story between oil and ants. They cannot move on it. They will die inside. So that's where you are able to prevent crawling insects from having access to your small scale snail farm at your backyard. Then we do the same for the cover nets where we have the mosquito net and the uh, Boko Haram nets or chicken nets on the top screening with the wooden frame. So this way we are able to take care of the issue of predators and parasites for the intensive system. Now the semi-intensive system, which is the free range system, excuse me, the greenhouse system, we still have this water trench around the greenhouse system as you can also see from the screen. We, we build it around the greenhouse system and the soil we introduce into the greenhouse or the soil that is originally there before we cultivate on it we spray pesticides chemicals to kill off every type of soil pest before we begin to cultivate and barricade it with the water trench so you cannot have access of much uh, creeping things coming into the greenhouse from the outside and from the inside, the soil is treated, so you are also able to control uh, parasites and predators. But peradventure, they uh, come out from the ground because the, you cannot cast the concrete pens, uh, sorry, the greenhouse system. You use the oil method. You drop oil in sp specific locations, dig a hole, and put red oil. The red oil is an attractant to hands. So the ants will come towards the red oil, then we kill them with hot water. We also have those videos on our YouTube channel. So please, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel for more videos and more lessons on practicals and theories. So this is where we'll call it a day for this part of the video. And I'm, I hope that this has been very interesting and educational. So thank you until we have our next class again. God bless you and bye-bye.